Hello, my name is John Pinto. I'm a mathematician and amateur astronomer, and I'm going to be presenting Dominique Pernay's uh, Celestial Navigation course uh, as presented uh, in his uh, book, Celestial Navigation, and an exercise manual uh, that you can uh, get more information about at marinenavigationbooks.com. You can also get other resources, including this slide deck. So today we're going to talk about time and the longitude problem, um, which <clears throat> is extremely important for determining your location on the Earth uh, using a sextant. So <clears throat> we know that the Sun, represented here, moves around the Earth at about 15 degrees an hour. Right? It has to go all the way around the Earth. 360 degrees in 24 hours, and that turns out to be 15 degrees per hour. So if we know, uh, we take a reference line, say Greenwich Meridian, and we know how many hours it's been since the sun has crossed the meridian at Greenwich, <clears throat> and it crosses our meridian, if we take that time and divide it by 15 degrees per hour, we'll know exactly where our longitude is. So how fast does the GP of the sun travel around the equator? I'll give you a second to think about that. It actually goes around the Earth at 1,700 kilometers per hour. That is supersonic. Uh, that's Mach 1.4 times the speed of sound. So it moves around very quickly. So um, knowing the sun's GP uh, is going to be critical uh, to know the exact moment of time we take our sight. Because the sun's GP is known accurately using the nautical almanac for any moment of time, uh, even if it's with interpolation. And our circle of position centered on that sun GP will only be as good as uh, the accuracy of our measurement of the time we take our sight of the sun. Hence, we have this problem of longitude. When did this become critical? <clears throat> uh, navigators have known for a long time that the importance of uh, knowing longitude is critical, but it came to a head in England uh, with the disaster um, of, a, uh, of a fleet of British ships off the Isles of Scilly, off of Cornwall. Apparently, there was a navigator who had uh, difficulty determining the longitude, thought he was many, many miles away from where he was, and the boats ran aground on the Isles of Scilly, and many, many, many lives were lost. That resulted in the British Parliament instituting the Longitude Act of 1714, um, which gave a prize to anyone who could come up with a practical way to solve this problem of longitude of determining time at sea um, with such accuracy that this kind, kind of disaster uh, would be a thing of the past. This is a copy of the act itself. So the problem of longitude is just really a problem of telling time. What time is it in Greenwich when the sun crosses the boat's meridian? If you know that time, you can subtract it from the time the sun crossed the meridian at Greenwich, and you'd have our, your longitude. Now, <clears throat> what was the solution? So there were basically two approaches uh, proposed at the time. One was proposed by the astronomers. They said, nope, it's got to be done using something in the heavens, whether it's the position of the moon or the or the moons of Jupiter, or something along those lines, that the astronomers uh, would be able to tell you the time by observing those things. The other I idea would be some kind of mechanical device to tell accurate time, which uh, was named a chronometer. And we'll see in our next episode uh, what these solutions were and which solution actually won. All right, so episode 11 is coming up, and uh, we'll see you soon.
Thank you very much.